Hello everyone and welcome to the very first audio commentary of the Summer of Animation here on the Slash KZ channel. I am of course your host Slash KZ and today I'm here to do a commentary on one of my favorite Mickey Mouse shorts. Mr. Mouse Takes a Trip, released in 1940 by the Walt Disney Company. Now, originally I wanted to go ahead and do a, um, a Mickey, Donald, and Goofy short because I, I like that dynamic a lot. And plus the original voices with Walt Disney, Clarence Nash, and Pinto Kolvik. I just think it's a nice mix together. But I couldn't really find any good shorts on YouTube. And even if I did find some, they are all trimmed down. I really wanted the original voice actors. Um... Not to say that the redubs are, are are bad, it's just I'd rather listen to the original voice actors who performed the um, the characters. But um, this is one of my favorite Mickey Mouse shorts. Um, I originally watched it on Disney Plus, and it, it's really good because it's really simple. It's just Mickey, Pluto, and later we're going to see uh, Pete is just the main antagonist of the film. Um, but this, uh, this is a good short. It came out in 1940, like I said, and at first I did not realize it was released in 1940. I actually didn't. I feel like it was a mistake because Mickey's design is the more technical, modern design that we're used to today. But um, the reason why he looks that way is because they did, they made him a. They, they gave. I'm sorry, Pete's lips are just. That is just the funny thing here. Um, no, but in the early, the um, late 30s to the early 40s, they made a little um, redesign to the whole Disney cast and made them, you know, a lot more cute and a bit more lifelike to um, express themselves a lot more. So that's why Mickey looks a lot more in his modern design with the uh, yellow shoes or brown shoes, um, the shorts, the gloves. He actually looks like how he's supposed to. As in earlier shorts, you know, he'd have the uh, pie eyes and his um, skin would, a little bit, would be a little more, you know, like flushed out, not as tan as you usually see here. But, um, enough about Mickey's design, I know it's such a great thing to talk about here, but, um, yeah, honestly, um, classic short, I, I don't really know what else to say, this is my tech, this is my first commentary I'm doing for this month, and it's, it's kind of crazy, honestly, um, but yeah, it's just classic, you know, you got Mickey and you got Pluto, Pluto is, is great here, um, I like this, I really do, uh, and just hearing Walt Disney's voice, is crazy i'm honestly like when you went back and actually listened to old recordings of walt disney like not just on tv but like going back to actual recording sessions i'm amazed he was he managed to actually get that voice down because like it's crazy and there's no I don't, I don't believe there's any dubbing because i know for a lot of voice actors in that era like mel blank um, who did most of the Looney Tunes voices, he had to, they had to digitally, or not digitally, they had to speed it up in post, like, for Daffy Duck and stuff like that. Um, so I'm surprised that, um, Walt Disney didn't need any, uh, pitch adjustment for Mickey Mouse. So, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It's great. It's great. <laughs> Hello. And Pete. Ah, oh, yes. The original Pete. Uh, honestly, I mean, I like Pete. He, he's a pretty good antagonist. I'm, I'm, it's him I don't really use him a lot anymore. I mean, last his last major appearance was in Kingdom Hearts 3, but I really wish I used him more because he's actually a very, very fun um, Disney character and antagonist to Mickey. Like, I know he was in the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and racer stuff, whatever it was. Um, but they don't really see him too much anymore, and there we go, we got Pluto, Pluto doing his thing here, and Mickey has a cane, I don't know why he has a cane, Mickey can perfectly walk just fine, but I guess, I guess that, that we didn't, that was fine. Um, we got the main gag for this short here. <laughs> Pete, you, yeah, yeah, there you go, beat him up. I am honestly surprised that Pete wouldn't have figured out that that's actually Pluto because, I mean, I get it. They live in like a, a more anthropomorphized like environment. Everyone has like he can. Most of the animals can talk. They have gloves and all that stuff. But like, I'm surprised he didn't, didn't catch on that. Um, this per, this uh lady, as he says, has paws. I, I'm surprised he didn't actually figure that one out. But 
you know, it's fun. It's great. Um, just a little thing to go into for this whole summer of animation thing. Um, yes, I will be doing I'll be doing com multiple commentaries throughout the entire summer, uh, ranging from Disney to Warner Brothers, Tom and Jerry, Universal, all that fun stuff. So it's gonna be different from week to week. I much want to start with Disney because when you think of animation, the first thing that pops in your mind uh, usually is Disney and the classic Mickey Mouse shorts. So. It's fun, and honestly, I really wish that they would go ahead and make more Mickey Mouse shorts. Because at this point in time, Mickey Mouse is used more so as like a mascot and nothing more. I mean, that's basically what the entire like like Giant Six, like Mickey, Donald, Goofy, Pluto, Minnie, and Daisy, they're all really just mascots for the Walt Disney Company, and nothing really much else. I mean, yeah, they have shows and stuff, but they don't really have shorts anymore unlike characters like you know like bugs bunny Bat, daffy duck and you know, all the looney tunes they have several shorts over in theaters um they have the new looney tunes cartoons on hbo max which fills our classic cartoons basically um and when you really think about it like the looney tunes have had way more films i mean they had space jam back in action but mickey mouse doesn't really start in, in an actual film besides like christmas anthology things which if you have not seen those Christmas anthologies, like Once Upon a Twi Time and Twi Twice Upon a Time, um, they're actually very, very good. I, I do, I do recommend them a lot. So there, Jesus, pegged in the oh my god. <laughs> For a second there, Mickey's like possessed by Zool. His voice becomes so deep. Oh my god. I forgot how good the short actually is, not gonna lie. I mean, it might vary from person to person because, you know, this is very subjective uh, at the end of the day. It is. And Pluto's there. Um, I really do like the short. Uh, I will try and do more Disney shorts because there are others. Like, I know there's a Donald Duck one called uh, New Neighbor, which I really enjoy too, which has Pete also. Um, so that's a really good one too. But I might as well start with, you know, starting with animation. I might as well start with Mickey Mouse, the OG. I mean, yeah, we have Felix the Cat, but who really talks about Felix the Cat? I'm not going back to watch the old 1920s stuff. I'd rather watch something you now that's, like, in color. I mean, not saying I don't like watching stuff that isn't in color, but I prefer to be in color here. Hey, we're here. There you go. They shake hands because that's the thing they can do. But, yeah, that is um, Mr. Mouse Took the Trip. Thank you very much for watching the commentary, guys, and see you guys next time on the Summer of Animation.